All right, good morning. I'm Aaron Heiser, Makers Leather Supply, and welcome back to Making the Soft Sided Briefcase. This is video four. Um, the good news here is we're getting a lot less pieces on our desk. As we sew them all together, then we just don't have as many to have to go through. Um, so what do we got? We've got our front panel here with its pockets on it. We've got a back pocket with, uh, with its edge sewn down. We have our middle uh, panel with our gusset pieces sewn to it. We've got a lid flap and the very back side or the, the back uh, panel of the, the bag. Okay. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about how we're going to close the bag. All right. Now in the mystery box, we included a buckle and a strap for, uh, for each of them. Okay. That the, the flap would come over and then there'd be a buckle right here and you could buckle it in. I love the look of a buckle on a bag. I really do. Um, but they're not as convenient. Okay. So I in sitting here thinking about, you know, how to this bag and what I'm doing with it and everything. I, um, I decided that for the video's purposes, I wanted to show you a little trick that I uh, could avoid having uh, just a buckle on the front, okay? Again, they look great, but they're inconvenient. It takes a while to unbuckle it and, and, and manipulate it and everything. So like on, let's say, motorcycle saddlebags, uh, soft-sided bags, a lot of the time you'll see that nice big pretty buckle, but then underneath it will be a little plastic clip. Well, I don't like plastic clips. Um, so I kind of dug around in all my spare hardware and I found this thing and what it is, it's, it was left over from when we did the, uh, what's that silly thing called? The fanny pack, right? The belt bag. Um, so anyway, it's just a fun little inch and a half clasp that, uh, works great. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to show you is how I'm going to install this onto here behind the buckle so that it can't be um can't be seen right the the flap or the the strap from the buckle is going to come down and, and mostly cover it up and uh yeah and it'll still be there so that the bag's easy to open and close but yet it's going to be um mostly hidden okay and it'll still look like the, the buckle itself is what closes the bag um if you're just putting a buckle on it, real simple. You create a piece that uh, attaches your buckle right here. Your bag flap, you know, has a, the uh, the billet end of the the belt, uh, the strap on it, and it just buckles in, no problems at all. Okay. But again, for the video purposes, I want to show you something a little bit more complicated. So um, I have this uh, this piece that, like I said, it was we used it on the uh, the belt bag, the fanny pack. I hate that word. Uh, anyway, um, and all I did is I just attached a, uh, it's probably a four to five ounce piece of black uh, bridle to it as a tab. And we're going to sew that down pretty low because you got to think I need room for the buckle above it um, and then, you know, the flap and it's, it's strapped to come down over that. So I'm going to sew it pretty low on here. And I want it perfectly centered between these pockets because that would mean it's perfectly centered on the bag itself. Okay. Um, so it'll end up being about right there. All right. Let me change your angle a little bit. There we go. Adjust the lighting here. See if we can help with the, with the black leather. Ooh. Maybe. No. Sorry. I don't know what this looks like until the camera's on, so if we just turned it off. Almost as good, just as good. Heck, I don't know. All right, so anyway, um, I'm going to sew that down. I'll create another strap that will go through the buckle itself um, and attach to the, the fold-over flap on top of the bag. Um, but there will also be another little piece that just attaches this to the base of the buckle okay and that way like i said it's a lot easier to open and close so without further ado i'm gonna i'm gonna get to that um i need to create a piece that attaches this right here 
to the buckle like so. Okay. Um, real easy to do. I'm going to take a piece of a uh, four to five ounce bridle here. Um, I need to punch an oblong hole in it for the buckle itself. And I'm just going to kind of guesstimate where I want that and I'll put it far enough down that I can trim either to either side of the buckle or either side of the strap here. And the goal is to never have to actually use this buckle as a buckle um, once we get it positioned and where we want it. So the easiest way to make this piece, okay, is I'm going to make it to where this thing goes into here, the buckle's right there, and then I'm just going to overlap these two ends underneath, I'll cut, I'll trim them off, overlap them, and I'm just going to sew them down to each other, and that's it, there's, there's no real trick or secret to it, um, it just needs to get done. And again, I want this thing pretty close to underneath the buckle here, just to save space. I don't need a lot of length here because um, I don't have a lot of room to work with it. Okay, so if I put it right there, then that's all the room I have. So that, that strap that comes off the flap is going to be pretty short. So I've got to shorten this thing up as much as I can. So, if I do it like that and then overlap those two sides right there, then I'll just sew that down. Okay, I'm get it straight, of course. But yeah, when I say overlap, just like that, and then I'll stitch all three of those layers down just like that and uh, we'll call this sucker good okay so i'm going to do a little bit of glue in first to get it to to set still for me and then i will stitch it down and that'll be that i do want to make sure of course that my buckle's on there right if it's on backwards then we'll have to cut off anything that we did and redo it so yeah so give me a second i'm going to get that glued up and uh, we'll be right back All right, so like I said, all I did is I wrapped that piece of leather around there and I sewed it on. Just ran it through the, since I was using a cylinder arm sewing machine, I hung the buckle off the side and just sewed me a nice line right there and there we go. Now, again, I have to think about my placement of where I'm gonna put this on the bag um, and I want it as low as I can get it um, down here because I, uh, I need the room for the, the the flap and then the little strap that'll go into the buckle okay so I know where I'm going to um, I know where my stitch line is going to be down here along this this bottom edge once I get the the gusset glued to it and I'm basically going to put this just a quarter of an inch above that um, I don't like having it so low as far as you know how close that is to that that gusset um, but I really don't have a choice I need it I need that that buckle as low as I can get it okay so I'm gonna um, set it on here I'm gonna mark it with my uh, my scratch all here and then I'm gonna rough up the leather so that I can glue it down and then I'm gonna stitch that roughing up inside that line that I just drew and I'm going to rough up this this leather's pretty slick too uh, on the that's holding the clasp so I'm going to go ahead and rough it up some as well all right 
Um, this will be a lot easier if I just take the end, the buckle end of that off. Put my glue on both sides here. that glue set up for a few minutes and then I'm going to stitch that on then we'll move to the next step all right got that sewn onto the bag looks great there's some extra glue seeping out there but that's fine once that dries up I can pick it out very easily gotta let it dry first I think I've mentioned that 20 or 30 times in this video series let it dry all right so now we have a few more things to do so here's the back panel and then here's the pocket that'll go on it. All right, we got to sew those together. Or, well, we got to glue them together. They'll sew together when the when they're sewn to the uh, the gusset piece. All right, but then here's the pocket flap or the the bag flap. It goes on the top of that, and that'll have to be sewn on. But I think it'd be easier if I first sew the uh, the strap on there that'll end up going through that buckle. Okay, and that way I'm not trying to force this whole thing under the sewing machine later um, you know the entire bag when I'm trying to just sew that one thing on there okay so I am going to take that uh, I've got to mock this up okay I've got to kind of clip some things together because I want to figure out exactly how long I need to make that that strap okay um, so I gotta pretend that that's there. The bag flap will be just like this. It'll pretty much rest right above the tops of the pockets there. Okay? And I want this strap to, of course, be, you know, sewn in up here, but I want it to come down far enough. I want it to come down far enough that it covers up that, uh, that clasp that I put on there. Okay? Or at least most of it. So, let me use my uh, inch and a half. Uh, this buckle's an inch and a half. I believe in the kits we put inch and a quarter buckles, but I ran out of those because we had so many kits to mail out. So I'm having to do mine with an inch and a half. Um, where am I? Put an end on it here. Kind of place that up on, on the bag where I think it would look nice, which is about right there. Okay. And then measure it down to the other end that I want to use and make a little mark and I'll put an end on it right there as well. And the reason I'm, I'm doing this is because I want to stitch around this, this uh, strap. I think it'll look really nice with a stitch on the edges of it. And I have to do that before I put it on there. Okay. So. I'm going to grab my edger that I thought was laying over here somewhere. Let me grab one. Uh, once again, closest one to me was a Ron's Montana edger number three. Off a little bit just so it looks really nice and then the same down here alrighty so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch just a superficial stitch it's not stitching it to anything from here down around and then up to here I'm not gonna worry about locking in the stitches or anything like that because then once I put it up here on the bag, I will go back over the edges of those stitches when I stitch it to the bag flap itself. Okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that real quick. Um, and then I'll grab it. Alright. So, again, I just kind of stitched around most of it and then left my stitches uh, uh, ended up at that, uh, that end up there. Now I need to center 
this thing on my bag flap. Okay, so once again, I'm grab my trusty uh, centering ruler here. And I'll center it, and then I also need to make sure that it's perpendicular. You know, I don't want it if it's off to the side like that. It's going to look pretty stupid. So. Um, center it make sure it's perpendicular and we're gonna mark that area and then we will glue it down so that in a minute we can sew it down all right so once again this leather's a little bit slick so we're gonna rough it up some I'm gonna be careful with my rougher though not to hit those stitches because then uh, could screw those up pretty good. Rough up the back of this thing a little bit just so it sticks good. All right. A little dab of glue here and we'll be uh, ready to stitch it on again. Let that glue set up for a second then I'm gonna stick it on there and then I'm just gonna sew around it and again I'm just gonna I'll back stitch over the areas where these stitches stopped and um, that'll be a completed stitch okay so when I come back that'll be done we're gonna start our final assembly on this bag putting all the big pieces together all right got that on there looks great moving on so I've got two more large panels. One of them was the outside pocket piece that we um, rolled and, and uh, sewed the edge down. And then the other one's just the back piece that it's going to attach to. But also what's going to attach to it is the pocket flap. Okay, that piece right here. So what I need to do now is stick these together and then I'm just gonna sew a line all the way across attaching the two alrighty but first I need to edge this I didn't uh, I didn't go ahead and use my edger on these again I'm not finishing any of the edges right now just to the um, for the time constraint of making the video but I will go back and do all that um, here later on but I do need to do this before it's all sewn together because it's a lot easier um, it's very hard to run this edger around pieces that aren't laying flat on the table. Side two. There we go. Got our edging done. Now I'm going to use double sided tape to hold this piece on. And uh, one of the main reasons I'm going to do that is because then I can exactly measure 
how far down this piece is. And of course, someone has taken my quarter inch double sided tape from my workstation. So, nope, they didn't. I'm sorry. Here we are. All right, so I'm going to put it right along the edge. And what it'll do is it'll make it to where I can make sure this thing's good and straight on the back of that. Um, I mean, I could also just scribe a line on it, but eh, two birds, one stone this way, I guess. Okay, get me a nice area of flat, no tools and crap in my way to work here. All right, so I've got bottom side up on both of these pieces here. Okay, and I'm going to remove my tape. And I'm going to place this right at the top edge of that tape. There we go. And I'm going to sew these two pieces together. Okay, just going to back stitch from here, work my way all the way across, and then back stitch again at the end. Um, I'll show you what that looks like, I reckon. Machine over here. Maybe I'll move the camera to the machine since the machine's locked in. Okay. I'm just kind of using my presser foot as my uh, my edge guide to know where I'm at here. Okay. And then here we go. Quick and painless with a machine. Um, still painless with a hand sewing, but not quick. So there's what that looks like. Flip all my threads here. That one got sewn in down there, apparently. Okay, now I've got my pocket piece has to sew to the outside of this piece. All right, and then the top of that pocket's going to come up just shy of uh, of that line right there. So I'm going to rough up the edges on three sides of this, and then I'm going to glue this on here. And uh, when I come back, that'll be done. We're not sewing it yet because we're going to sew all of that at the same time with the gussets on the inside. So I'm going to, uh, to, to go ahead and rough this up, put a little bit of contact cement on, on those three sides as well as right here on the back side of this, and I'll stick the pieces together. And when I come back, we'll talk about putting the gusset into it and actually building this bag. All right, so I got that pocket glued on there. Now I'm going to set this piece aside for a few minutes because we're going to go back to the front panel and the gusset piece because it is time to stick those two together permanently. All right, so what we're going to do is, this is obviously the front of the gusset because your, uh, your middle piece is going to face the front, not the back. All right, I'm going to 
kind of pre-stretch these corners just a tiny bit so that once it's got glue on it it's easier to work with I don't want to overstretch them because then I got more material to deal with than I know what to do with here okay trim off some extra threads here so I don't get them stuck in there all right so now I need to put glue contact cement um, all along the inside of this edge right here all the way around those three sides and then the same thing here around these three sides and then I'm just gonna stick them together okay um, just like before I will have the center the center's not marked here but I can mark the center here and I've already got the center marked on my gusset we did that in an earlier video I'll start there and pinch those two together and put a clamp on it then I'll start at the ends and pinch those two together and put a clamp on them and then I'll work my way around but we got to get glue on it first okay so I'm just kind of pre-folding my gusset here so that it works easier all right back to the glue jar and uh yeah, you know, I've, I've clarified it a couple of times, but every time I say glue, I'm talking about contact cement, okay? Um, this stuff is amazing. I love good contact cement. I didn't use it for the longest time. I just used to use the, um, what's it called, leather weld at Tandy. The white glue looks like Elmer's, and I, it's still a good product, don't get me wrong, but when you're gluing two things together that you need, uh, you need to sew together or something like that, um, this stuff is uh, contact cement just can't be beat um, it'll hold better it'll hold faster I mean I'd have to glue things together and clamp them overnight um, you know with the Tanner's bond stuff um, but uh, with this I don't have to I put it on each side and wait about three four or five minutes and then stick them together Okay. So I got that side, that part of it all ready with the, the contact cement. Now I'm going to do the back side of this. I'll pause the video while the two sides, the, the um, contact cement sets up on both sides. And uh, when I come back, we'll stick them together. I'm really liking how this bag's coming out. And that's funny because I hate black leather. Um, I know I've said it in lots of videos, um, to me it's just kind of boring, uh, I used to ride a lot of motorcycles, I've wore plenty of black leather vests and things like that, but I just, I don't like black leather. Um, but I'm really liking how this is turning out, I like the, uh, the nickel accents on it and stuff like that, um, I think it's going to be a really nice bag, so, yeah, Myra stop it, it's funny about that little wiener dog. My wife, if my wife is not here all day, Myra's fine. But as soon as my wife walks through here and let's say goes outside or out into the warehouse, old Myra there will just stand at the door and whine like she misses her like crazy. When, again, if she was never here in the first place, Myra wouldn't miss her at all, or at least wouldn't act like it. All right, so I'm going to pause the video for a few minutes, set that up, and then uh, when I come back, we'll stick those two pieces together. All right, got all the glue on there. The glue has set up. I'm gonna take a ruler right quick and measure my center on this piece because I forgot to uh, just a minute ago when I said I was gonna. And I'm just gonna use my, um, my scratch all here and make a little mark because we're immediately putting this center to that gusset center. Okay, so. Gusset center is right 
covered up with the glue. There it is. And then the center of this. I'll put those two together and put a clip on it. Then I'm going to go ahead and skip over here to this corner, put these two edges together, and put a clip on it. Then I'm going to skip over here to this corner, line them up, and guess what? Put a clip on it. All right. Giggity. So, all right, and now I'm just going to work my way around. I'm going to put all the straight edges together, clip if necessary, but shouldn't be too necessary if we got a good coat of uh, cement on there. Okay, then once I get just before the, the turn here, I'm going to come back down here and work my way back down towards that same turn. Okay, and the reason I do that is because I can take a lot of slack up in that, in that corner if they're not perfectly, you know, aligned and one piece stretched more than the other, some craziness like that. Okay, blue may be a little bit wet, or maybe I even waited too long, but we're going to put a couple clips on here. Very rare that I actually catch one of those. Okay. Getting into the corner here. Stick them together. Try to get those edges as straight as you can and then your edge work will be much easier later on if they're already lined up and they're not overlapping each other and craziness, okay? Now, I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the other side. Okay. Almost done, folks. See, pre-stretching that really helps because it's hard to stretch once you've got the glue on it. You get the glue everywhere and make a mess and maybe the glue even peels off some. Stuff like that. Modern problems require modern solutions. All right, so there it is. That's ready to sew. So let's sew it. We're just going to start right here. We're going to back stitch, go all the way down, around, all the way up to there, back stitch again. Let me check my bobbin before I start all that craziness. I think I have enough. All right, so here we go. This is where sewing gets a little bit more difficult because you only have two hands and the bag's getting bigger. But it's not near as bad as here in a minute, what it'll be when we go to put the back piece on too. I'm going to back my edge guide off just a little bit, about a quarter of an inch seam, seam uh, allowance here. A 
Hold my top thread there. All right. Here we go. This softer leather, um, it makes it pretty easy to go around this. If I was using a bridle or veg tan or something, it, I could still sew this line, but it would be a little bit harder to manipulate under the machine. See, and this is where when I put that strap as low as I could, I wanted to make sure it was still high enough that this the presser foot and everything could clear it. Because you don't want to have to wrestle with that when you're trying to go all the way around this bag here. there so as we approach the end here we're just going to go all the way up to the end and then back stitch a couple of stitches Pull that out. All right. I'll show you what that looks like, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the back panel against the back part of the gusset. Okay? Um, looking pretty good here. We did really well keeping our edges together and stitching all the way around. Um, yeah. So we're going to repeat those exact same steps again to sew the back gusset on. I mean, it's it's identical, except it's the back. <laughs> um, you know, we're just going to bend our pieces back, our gusset back, um, go ahead and fold it in and, and get it ready. And uh, we'll put glue all the way around it. And then the same thing with the, uh, the back piece. And then uh, sew them together. That's it. It's that hard. All right, so when I come back, we're going to have all that done. And then we'll talk about some finishing touches on this bag, and we're going to be done with this project finally. So, until then. All right. So, got the back sewn on. It's looking good. All the way around. And now it looks like a bag. Um, we need to mold the top a little bit, making sure that the where we place the handle is exactly is exactly on the top there. Okay, and then in a minute we'll worry about um, this buckle and where uh, to pull, place the hole so that the buckle uh, you know sets at exactly the right position. Okay. So, um, we're going to also do the, um, the handle that goes up here, okay, we're going to take a strip of one inch, uh, like the bridle type leather, and um, we're going to cover it with some of the bison and make it look really pretty. So, if I close this, where the handle is exactly where it needs to be on top, 
and the flap is closed how it needs to be there. Then I look at where the, uh, the hole would be for that buckle and I'm just going to use my scratch all here and make a little indention. And that's where my buckle is going to close. And once we close this bag, it'll be a little easier to work some of these things. But I'm also going to make a hole above and below, let's say three quarters of an inch, just because the strap with only one little hole in it just doesn't seem to look right. So three quarters of an inch below, three quarters of an inch above. And I don't want this hole to be huge. I want it to barely hold that buckle tongue in it, and I want it to hold it tightly so that when there is some slack on it, it doesn't accidentally unbuckle the buckle. Okay. The easiest way would be to undo that buckle there. Go ahead and put it on there. Oops, I have it on backwards. I was like, surely I didn't put that buckle on upside down after specifically mentioning not to do that. But luckily I did not. Like that. And then this goes in here. And as this breaks in, I mean, this, this thing will fall just right into place and buckle how it ought to every time. But there we go. Now with them, once we have a handle on top of that, that's going to look pretty sharp. I'm liking it. Okay, so let's start working on the handle. It needs to be broken, of course. That's why when you see a bag uh, in an advertisement or even sitting on a store shelf, it usually is full of paper so that you don't see all this, you know, collapsing here. All right, so here I have a one inch strap and I need to figure out how much of it I'm gonna put in here. And what it does is it's going to go underneath, I'll follow my, uh, my screwdriver here, it's going to go inside and underneath that, and then it'll Chicago screw right there, and then the same on the other side. But I also want to put a little sleeve of this bison leather on it, sewn to it, to make it look extra fancy, because we like fancy. So, I don't want it sticking up crazy high, but I also don't want it so short that every time I go to grab this, that like my fingernails scrape the bag. Okay, so there's a happy medium in there somewhere. Let me uh, get a little bit of the strap cut off, and we'll find that happy medium. And then I'm also going to cut the corners of it just so that it's a little easier to stick under there get into position. Okay, you just have to shove it into position there and then find where it looks good. So I'm gonna cut it and then I'll give you the measurement here of what I've found. There we go. Again I'm gonna clip the corners a little bit. This piece is nine and three quarters of an inch long uh, by one inch wide. Okay, so I just cut it off that one inch strap that I had uh, that I'll be using for the shoulder strap. Now I need to find a little bit of my extra bison over here so that I can cut that other piece off of it. Now, I think about when I think about how to how to how to make this uh, this piece for the the handhold. I'm gonna basically how wide is my hand? How wide? I mean, my hands are pretty good size, I guess. Uh, kind of average, if not large, for a normal person. So if I look at it on a ruler, five inches leaves me about a quarter of an inch on both sides of my hand. So. Let's say I make this thing five inches and then I need it to sew, go all the way around the strap and then sew along the top. This is a one inch strap. So if I did maybe 
three and a half inches, I could probably do that and then um, I'll sew it and then I'll trim it down to size, okay? Um, so for that, I'm gonna grab my big quilter square here and I'll start with uh, just making a straight edge that I can work off of. I want to find leather, you know, this, this bison has a lot of crazy grain to it, and I want to find something that's pretty consistent for the whole thing. All right. So, I did two sides of it there. Now we'll move it so that we can measure our five inches. As usual, you start with a four foot by eight foot workstation. And uh, by the time you've got all your tools and stuff set everywhere, you've got about three feet of space to work in. All right. So five inches by three and a half inches is what we're going to go for. And this could be wrong. I'm just kind of spitballing. I, I make these all the time, but I never think to actually look at the measurements I've done. So if it's wrong, we'll make another one. And I'll give you those measurements. All right, so that's going to work out just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, clip this together, and then I'm about a 3 16 in, maybe even a whole quarter of an inch in, I'm going to sew it across that line right there. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, edge my handle piece and uh, make sure it fits on there nicely. As long as it does, I'll pull it back off and I'll trim almost up to that sew line. Okay, so let me, um, let me clip this up and then again, I'm just going to sew down the long edge of this thing uh, to sew it closed. And uh, when I come back, we'll, we'll have that part done and we'll move on. Alrighty, got that done. So we got it sewn up. There's what it looks like right there, okay? And um, I haven't checked the fit yet, but uh, it looks like it's good, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pretend that it's good. And I'm going to find the edger that I just had my eyeballs on. There it is. I'm gonna round that where it's sewn a little bit. I actually sewed it close enough. I didn't really need to trim it off. Um, trim to your liking. Uh, mine's about an eighth of an inch or so of a seam allowance okay and then i'm going to take this and i'm going to edge all of its corners too and it'll make it slide through there a lot easier now when i go to push this through the uh, leather sleeve that we just made for it if it doesn't fit um you know if it's real snug um one of the things i've found that i've done is I'll take a poke a tiny hole in it and run a thread through it, drop the thread through the sleeve and use that to help pull it through. Uh, just a little tidbit on uh, you know how you can do that. Um, it really does help a lot. But I made this one to where it's just gonna slide right in apparently. Guess you do it enough times you finally get one right the first time. <laughs> All right, so there it is. Very professional looking handhold and um yeah so i am now going to take my buckle off here lay my bag on the table and we're going to stick this thing down in there like so and we'll check fit make sure it looks good and then we'll punch some holes and put some Chicago screws in it so it'll be there forever. The other thing I like about this little sleeve method we did is it makes it to where the handle's not perfectly dome shaped anymore. Now it has like it comes up, it runs across flat like a plateau, and then it goes back down. And uh, to me, it just looks nice. All right, do a little bit of shaping here, get it all pretty. And there's what we're working with. 
Okay, it's a good looking handle. All right, so now we need to poke or punch the holes for the uh, Chicago screws to go in there. Let's see if I've got the, uh, the right hole punch sitting in front of me or if I have to dig for it. There's a 316, so that one looks pretty good. Now, there's a lot of leather here to go through. There's two layers of bison, one layer of English bridle, plus the handle itself. So I'm going to kind of do this in phases, all right? I'm going to go ahead and hit it through the first layer and at least into the handle. And then I'll pull the handle out. And then I'll continue going through the other layers. And the reason I do that is the bevel on this hole punch makes it to where that hole is going to gradually get bigger the further the hole punch goes in. So there's no reason to have it going through extra layers if I can remove them uh, for a few seconds and do it that way. So I don't want to stretch out the holes to the point that they, uh, they're too big. All right, so there's that. Now I just make sure that I put the right end in the right uh, area so it lines back up. I'm going to put my Chicago screws in, uh, and I'll put it to where the, the actual screw slot's on the bottom side, and I'm going to use my Loctite just like I did before so that it doesn't accidentally come off. Man, I'd already pulled some of these out. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, there's that. And that, put my screw heads in. Okay, find my Loctite, to set it aside here. And again, I'm just gonna take and put a little drop of Loctite in the bottoms of these. Uh, I can either put it on the threads of the screws or drop a drip of it in the, uh, the hole itself. Six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. Bottom line is, I just don't want it on the leather. All right, so I'm getting one in. I'm a little shaky, I must need more coffee. Good and snug there. We'll move over here and put a drop of Loctite in this one and do it again. And then as soon as I can, I'm going to close my tube of Loctite so I don't accidentally squeeze it all over my cutting board here. So that would be ugly. There we go. All right, now, minus the edging and a shoulder strap, this bag is just flipping awesome. I'll show you what it looks like holding it up here. All right, um, again, I've got to kind of break it in, get the, get the corners to lay down flat for it and stuff. If it had stuff in it, th this would hold out like this and yeah, this is a pretty sharp looking bag. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, we're going to do the uh, shoulder strap real quick. There's nothing in the world to it. It's a very simple procedure. I'm just going to kind of demo what I'm going to do. Um, for the shoulder strap, I'm using these two swivel uh, snap hooks. Okay, these things right here. I've got a one inch strap. Now I can make the strap to where it's one piece or I could make it adjustable and put a put a put a buckle on it to where I could you know make it tighter or looser or whatever. Generally I just make them one piece. Um, the buckle is a nice addition but sometimes I find that it complicates things. Um, but anyway I will take and I put the strap across me and I just kind of hold on to uh, like a, if I was going to do a cross slung bag 
kind of figure out like where I would cut this thing. Let me back up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Um, kind of figure out where I would cut this thing, and then I, uh, I use a end punch and round the ends, fold it over the uh, the snap hook here, and then you can rivet it or sew it or um, Chicago screw it, whatever you want to do to hold it closed there. And then I finish the edges on it, and there it is. It'll be done. All right. So I uh, oh, and those attach, of course, right here to these little D rings that we put in a long time ago on the sides. So um, I really hope you enjoyed this build. I hope that uh, hope that you had fun with it. Uh, that's the main part of all this. Is if you're not having fun, then what are you doing it for, right? So. Um, Again, this was the soft sided briefcase. This was video four, the final video on uh, building this uh, this project. Um, until next time, I'm Aaron Heiser, Maker's Leather Supply, and have a great day.